by 29F Husbands, 34M, Best Friend Jacob, 30M, moved in with us. He's quiet and doesn't make a mess around the house as Bill used to while he lived with us. However, Jacob has this habit of walking into the bedroom randomly to take stuff from my husband's closet, say watch your shirt. He does it more frequently and it's gotten increasingly annoying. I felt like my privacy was being violated because I'm a private person, I'd like to have quiet time reading or meditating. I tried to speak up on the issue but got brushed off by both of them. Last week, Jacob barged in at 11 p.m. and interrupted my sleep. I was sleep deprived the whole day at work. I got fed up so what I decided to do is start sleeping on top of the bed fully naked whenever I'm in there. Last night, Jacob walked in at 10 p.m. while I was there and when he saw me, he let out a loud crop and quickly turned around and rushed out. I started hearing a commotion outside so I got dressed to see what was going on. I was met with a lot of yelling and scolding and shaming from my husband, saying I was out of line to expose his brother to such horrendous sight. I asked what he meant and he yelled at me to stop acting dumb. I said I felt frustrated after my privacy got violated and he went on about how Jacob was only there to grab something which literally takes seconds. Then went on about how I made him uncomfortable while describing my behavior as an easy girl. The argument got heated and he told me to start putting some decent clothes on and act like a lady instead of an easy girl since it's his room too and he already gave permission. I got mad and told him loudly that I will keep sleeping on the bed naked as long as his friend keeps walking into the room, then I walked off. He didn't stop complaining and complaining saying I'm being ridiculous and even suggested that this was an attempt for me to make Jacob move out. Am I the idiot? We're still arguing about it till this morning. Not the idiot. But it sounds like you have a husband problem. He should care that his friend keeps going into the bedroom. And how are you being naked a horrendous sight? That is terrible of him to even say that and take his friend's side. Perhaps the husband and Jacob can sleep in the new art studio when it's complete. Right? If your husband thinks your naked body is a horrendous sight, I guess you should never show it to him ever again. Not the idiot. There are so many red flags here. Why do men keep moving into your home? How can they not respect your privacy? What guy shares clothes and watches with their friend in that way? What grown man screeches at a naked woman and runs to her husband and complains? What husband allows a man into his and his wife's bedroom and chastises his wife when she complains? All the clues add up to your husband being gay. Not the idiot, but I am very bothered that you are being called an easy girl for being naked in your own home. Maybe get a lock on your bedroom door. Not the idiot. What does he mean by horrendous sight? That's supposed to be your husband and it's your bedroom. He should knock if anything. That's whack. I, 26F, am getting married in about two months. I sent out my wedding invitations recently and at the bottom, it says adults only. No exceptions. First, let me say that I love kids. But my fiancé and I made the decision to not allow kids' babies to our ceremony because they get bored, cry, won't sit still, have tantrums, and I just don't want that to happen during our wedding. We're also going to have an open bar and I don't particularly want a bunch of drunk adults around my little cousins or my friend's children. I have a cousin, we'll call her Sam, that texted me last night saying. So your dead on is seriously telling me I cannot bring her son to your wedding to which I said yes. Sam responds. Then I can't come and that kills me. I just want you to know how badly I want to be there and I have dreamt my entire life of standing next to you at your wedding. But I just can't want to be somewhere with someone who doesn't want the other half of my heart there. She's trying to guilt trip me into letting her bring her son. Saying. And I've confided in my best friends and they say it's your wedding, it's your right to have it the way you want, but yeah. I just want you to know it's not vengeance when I don't come. I'll probably cry the entire day. I suggested that she take her son, he's seven, to his friend's house for a few hours so that she can attend. She says. I can't just tell him no and leave him somewhere. I'm not strong enough to do that to his sensitive little heart. I could if he wasn't so aware and sensitive. It would hurt him too much. He's too smart to manipulate. I'm not asking her to manipulate her son. I'm asking that she be an adult and tell him he can't come and that children aren't allowed to attend so she'll take him to his friends while she's gone. Not to mention that she's angry that I didn't choose her to be my maid of honor. I chose my stepsister. While on the phone, Sam said. 
I don't mean any offense by this, but screw her. She's literally only mad because my dad cheated on my mom 10 years ago and married the woman he cheated with. She hates my sister because she hates my stepmom. I ended up being on the phone with her for half an hour talking to her about this. With her constantly telling me. I'm trying to get sober, so I just wanted to talk to you and tell you how I feel. To me, sounds like she's going to blame me if I still tell her no and she decides to drink two meds again. We ended the phone call with her saying. Will you just promise me one thing, even if it's a lie? Will you just promise me that you'll consider it and that you'll talk to your fiancé about it? So I told her yes, that I promised I'd consider it talk to him about it. And I did, I considered it, I talked, angry cried, to him, and I'm not changing my mind. Am I the idiot? Update. I texted her two days ago and used the next words. There's nothing I want more than for you to be at my wedding. I love her son, but after speaking to fiancé, we came to the conclusion that we still do not feel comfortable having kids at our wedding. This is a decision we made before we started the planning, knowing that some people might disagree with it. If you aren't able to get a babysitter, I would completely understand why you wouldn't come. And I also spoke with her stepdad, he said he will be attending. She responded in less than a minute and said okay. So I guess we'll see how this goes. Not the idiot at all. It's your wedding. If you don't want kids there, then no kids should be there. End of discussion. I'd stop talking to her about it and just let her be pissy, at this point if she does still show up without her kid, I'd be worried she'd be guilt tripping you the entire night on how her kid should be there. My husband and I were invited to a wedding recently and the first thing I asked them is are kids allowed? So I know if I need to find a sitter for my 5 year old son. She said no so I got a sitter and I'm looking forward to a child free night with my husband and friends. Not the idiot. She thinks her son is too smart to manipulate, but that you are not too smart to manipulate. That is what she is trying to do. Tell her plenty of moms who adore their children can part with them for one afternoon or evening. If she is unable to part with her child, tell her you're so sorry she can't make it and you hope she enjoys the evening with her son. Not the idiot. No child wants to go to a wedding. Furthermore, no child wants to be the only child at a wedding or anywhere else. Those are the points that torpedo her nonsense about how upsetting it would be for her child to not be invited. But they aren't relevant to whether you're the idiot because it's your event and you can stipulate it to be child-free if you want. I did for mine. In the five years since, neither my partner nor I have spent a single second regretting that decision. Not the idiot. It takes zero parenting skill to tell a seven-year-old that you're going to an adults-only event and he's going to stay at home because he'd be bored going with mom. Your cousin is trying, poorly, to make your wedding about her. She can sit down now. Not the idiot. Tell her to put what she'd spend on a gift into a fund for that kid's future therapy sessions, because the boy is he gonna need a lot of them. Imagine thinking that a few hours at a friend's house would destroy a seven-year-old sensitive little heart. Not the idiot. I read the whole thing thinking she was talking about a newborn or at least a baby. A seven-year-old. No, ma'am, she can find him a sitter. Not the idiot. Wow, she is manipulative. Seriously. There is absolutely no reason she can't get a sitter for her child. The kid has no desire to attend your wedding. This is all a matter of her being selfish and manipulative. If you can afford to do so, hire security to make sure no one brings a kid. Because this cousin is probably going to try to show up with her kid. By the way, don't waste your time discussing it with her any longer. Tell her you're sorry she won't be able to attend and you'd love to see her another time. I'm going to cut to the chase, I, 36M, got about a year or so left before making that final trip to the afterlife. I've made my peace with it and these last few years have been the best of my life. We've known for a while that I was living on borrowed time, so we vacationed a lot before COVID. Everyone knows I probably won't be here by next year. Well as it turns out my old ex decided to come back into my life. We were together since high school. Before I proposed I found out she was cheating with one of her friends and broke up when we were 27. It was the darkest time of my life until I was pushed into going to therapy. Three years later I got back into dating and met my wife. Got married after two years and we have been together ever since. She's been the most incredible partner through all this and I don't know how I would have made it without her you can guess why my ex came back. She'd like us to meet so she could formally apologize to me and have one last conversation. 
I said no way. She is the last person I want to see right now and didn't take it well I guess. Our families are somewhat close. Her parents have been my aunt's neighbors before either of us was even born, so they still saw each other after we split. My aunt heard from her folks that I'm refusing to see her, and she's got my parents involved. Now they all hate her, except my aunt who always had a soft spot for her, but they do feel like maybe we should talk before I go. I don't know what exactly they think this will bring, aside from just dragging up painful memories. I don't want to bring up anything from the past and focus on making the most with my wife and family. They left it alone at first until my ex tried to reach me again, asking to please meet. My ex says she is heartbroken over my condition and just wants us to talk so we can have closure. But I explained to her I had mine years ago and am in a better place. And where I believe I was the idiot was telling her she's gonna have to live without hers. I'm getting a little more ridicule from my aunt and my dad. Mom's still a bit on my side about it. They do think what I said was very insensitive and it's clearly painful for her knowing what she did to me and that I'll be gone soon. My wife is completely on my side here and actually gave my dad a piece of her mind, it was pretty hot so see, she rarely ever yells for making things more complicated for me. They've left me alone, but it's still on my mind and I don't know how exactly I was the idiot for saying that. I had said it as a statement, there's no reason for us to speak, except it is for her benefit, and since I'd rather not, then she will in fact have to live without that closure. Not the idiot. It's been years, you've moved on and are happy. She's exploiting the situation and wants to apologize to play the bereaved ex role later on. She could have apologized and had closure years ago. The timing feels selfish, and you are not obligated to indulge her. I agree that OP is not the idiot. He has no obligation to her, especially not one created from her being crappy to him. I don't that makes it fair game for us to read the worst motives into her, though. She could be doing this so that she can get public sympathy later, but it doesn't seem that likely to me. It sounds like she's just selfish and wants to get OP to tell her she isn't the idiot for what she did before he dies. Or it could be something else. Not the idiot. I don't care about your ex. I just want to wish you strength, joy, peace, love, light, and whatever makes you happy on your journey and beyond. Not the idiot. It's selfish of her to think you owe her anything, least of all closure. You sound incredibly emotionally mature I'm so happy you have someone like your wife by your side as you come to the end of your journey and all I want to say on that front is death isn't the end. Wishing you luck, friend. Not the idiot. I am under no obligation to give a stranger any of my limited time or attention. X became a stranger to me the day she decided to turn her back on me and find her happiness elsewhere. Please stop advocating for me to make others feel better about what's left of my life. Not the idiot. She slammed the door on your relationship by cheating. She doesn't get to open it again just so she can close it gently this time. Not the idiot. You're at peace and you deserve to enjoy your final year with your wife. Your cheater ex literally made her bed and now gets to sleep it in. She knows what she did was wrong and she only wants closure so she doesn't feel guilty. It literally has nothing to do with caring about you. She's still being selfish.